All right, folks, welcome to the 42284 podcast. Uh, to my right here, I've got Jeremy. Straight across from me, I've got Kyle. Uh, I'm going to let Jeremy tell you a little history on Sunfish and, and about the name of the podcast we chose. So, Sunfish is the only Catholic community in Edmondson County. Uh, you know, you go up into other counties, there's Catholic churches everywhere, and so we're the... We're the uh, black sheep of the county, basically, over here sometimes. Uh, but uh, a lot of good people in the area. Sunfish is also uh, uh, known as fun fish because, you know, as Catholics are, they like to drink a little bit. And, and some alcohol gets consumed on this side of the county, probably nowhere else in Edmondson County unless, you know, you look real deep. But uh, we don't really know when Sunfish was founded. I had a uh, history teacher tell me one time, or I don't even know if he was a history teacher. He was a substitute teacher by the time I was in school. Do you, Kyle, do you remember what? I think he I think he did teach maybe some history. What was his first name? Dale. Mr. Dale Huffman. Dale Huffman. Yeah, he passed away a few years ago. But uh, if you ever got Mr. Huffman talking, you could forget schoolwork. He would sit and tell you story after story after story. And back then, we really didn't appreciate it probably like we would have now. And, uh you know, back then it was more to get out of school work, but he was know, a wealth of knowledge. That's he was for a sure. wealth of knowledge, yeah. And part part of this podcast too is to to get some of this stuff on record, try to preserve some history. Yeah, try to uh, interview some of the older people and and even some younger people who uh, you know who are pillars in this community and or have been in this community. They may not live here anymore, uh, but anyhow. So uh, Mr. Huffman told Huffman told me one time that this was called the Durban Precinct was the original name of it uh they do know it was named after the uh, abundance of the little sun perch fish in the creek down here that goes through your property kyle or and uh you know but uh it's uh the first church they think was built in the 1840s and it was a log structure and it was somewhere in the vicinity of where sunfish creek and bear creek come together and so uh, once the uh, more settlers moved into the area, they, uh, uh, there was a frontier priest here named Elijah Durbin. And he was my fourth or fifth great-grandfather's brother. And your sixth or seventh, that's where Brandon and I are kin, which just says that his line bred a lot faster than my <laughs> line did. You know, there's more of them, I guess you'd say. <laughs> But uh, Father Elijah Durbin was a frontier priest. He would ride horseback all through the uh, western part of the state. Founded a lot of the western yeah. Catholic churches. Founded St. Jerome's where my great-grandpa and grandma got married. Yeah, yeah. In, it's in Fancy Farm, Kentucky, if you're where, ever in Fancy where Farm. Where the picnic is. Yeah, the political picnic. There is a, a plaque on the Kentucky roadside historical plaques on the side of the road down there that tells about Father Elijah. And there's actually a picture of him uh, down here in the Catholic Church hanging on the wall. And he was a, I mean, I see where I get my looks from, just to be honest with you. I mean, we were blessed with looks even back in those days. <laughs> but uh, he's buried up at, uh, oh, I can't think of the name of the cemetery up in Louisville. It's a Catholic cemetery up there. It's uh, where a lot of the, I mean, uh, you hear a lot about it on, on when you hear of, senators and stuff like that being buried up there you know mm -hmm. political figures uh so anyhow uh he was a frontier priest he rode all over the western part of the state uh, he founded a lot of the churches uh, back then you know you may only see a priest once every two or three years and uh he uh was part of part of the the frontier group that converted a lot of people to uh to the brought them into the catholic church so anyhow, his dad donated 10 acres of land down here to him and to the church to start this church. And so they built a church uh, sometime late 1800s, and then uh, in the 1930s, lightning struck it and burned it down. Uh, Guy Durbin told me one time that they were, uh, Guy's brother was somehow dating one of maybe Senate's sisters or aunts or somebody, and they were over here on Duval Cemetery Road and a thunderstorm blew up and they saw the lightning strike and so they ran across the the farms and the val or the hollers on their horses and by the time they got over there there was nothing they could do it already, it was already up in flames wow. and so uh, they built this new church 
in the 30s. Uh, Dad put a roof on that church uh, sometime in the mid-90s, and they found a silver quarter buried in the mortar on a chimney from 1936. And so that, that he, you know, and, and to think about it, in the 30s, for you to stick a quarter somewhere, I mean, that, that represented maybe a couple hours' wage back then. Absolutely. And so, uh, but anyhow, so this same church down here since the 30s, there was a Catholic school. A lot of people, uh, I think, Brandon, your dad and my dad both went to school there. I think it closed in the early 70s, and the schools, uh, you know, the kids went on to Sunfish, and then the schools consolidated. Uh, and we went to Kyrock Rock or Brownsville. I think we all three were Blackhawks. Mm-hmm. I have the rare distinction of being a Blackhawk and a Bulldog because I graduated fifth grade at Brownsville. Uh, and for the people not from around here, if you look in uh, our design work, you'll see the church and the old schoolhouse. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so anyhow, I mean, that's a brief rundown. A lot of us have grew up here and... You know, a lot of you are still raising families here. I started a few years raising a family here, and I'm back in western Kentucky now, but it's a great place. There's a lot of good people here. Uh, the people work hard here. I told a priest one time, he was talking, they were talking, we were in a financial meeting, and I said, the people of Sunfish may have a little money. They're going to hang on to it because they earned it hard, the hard way. Very few of them Absolutely. got it easily. So, And uh, we kind of decided on the name because that was the old Sunfish zip code back when there was a post office in the local store here, which was called the Sunfish Mall, the Sunfish which Mall. your grandpa owned for several years. Yep, he bought it from Lonzo Durbin in the late 60s or early 70s, and uh, it actually fronted 187 out there. And they moved the building. And they moved the building because back when that store was built, you know, 187 was a dirt road and there was horses and buggies and and so it sit right on the road, and so they wanted to move it back uh, away from, and the gas pumps were over there in front of it, were, was really the reason where it ended up at. That's what I was going to ask, is that because where the pumps went yeah. out? Is mm-hmm. that... They had put new gas pumps in and put them back there, uh, because back in those days, I mean, nobody, the EPA, nobody would give a crap about that, and tanks went bad, they just left them in the ground, and, mm-hmm. and uh, put new, new ones in, and so instead of digging the ones up, they were there by just the moved. store, they just moved it back, and so... Uh, they moved the store back there to get it off the road, and they put a foundation under it. It had sat on the ground, and uh, he ran it until 90, I think it closed in July of 95, and the post office left, and uh, but 42284 was the, the zip code. I've got a letter that my great-grandmother wrote in, uh, I think, the 20s or 30s that's got the 42284 postage stamp on here where they, you yeah. know, they stamped oh, yeah. the yes. uh-huh. uh, sealed envelope yes. or the uh, uh, the stamp, stamp. That, uh, postmark. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, you know, it's it's interesting. But uh, I tell you a funny one, uh, back in about 2000, uh, they were digging out there by the intersection of the 238 and 187 and dug into that old tank. It's still there. And the state decided they were just going to cover that back up and not worry about it and move on down the road. So... That's how things are looked at around here. So, and John A.'s wife, Martha, was postmaster. Yeah, at B Spring. What when she postmaster here though? Oh yeah, she Sunfish was postmaster for, master here. I'd forgot about that and for she, a good while. Yeah, and then she ended up moving to B Spring to be postmaster. Was that after this one closed? The best no, uh, oh, she was okay. It was before. Uh, she moved to B. I don't know why. You know, this is one of those things we should have done this years ago to to ask people these mm-hmm. questions. But for some reason, she moved to B Spring. And uh, that's when it was, B Spring was there in front of uh, uh, the restaurant in Toby Vincent's yard. Mm-hmm. And uh, I mean, it was a, just a, it was smaller than the she shed. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so, and then John A. took over Postmaster okay. here at uh, Sunfish. But I, I don't have any idea why that, that happened. I mean, we may ask somebody, but I don't know. So. Well, since you mentioned it, we're, we're recording in the she shed. We've took over the wife's she shed to be the makeshift studio i guess you'd say for right now so. i have never been so proud to be in a room with ribbons and fake flowers and all this <laughs> cool stuff and i mean it's very it's shabby chic you know it's very uh i mean it's you've brought the best out in it over here so another thing i thought of that i probably should have looked up that one of y'all may know what was the old huff zip code four two two five oh Okay. I lived in Huff. Uh, I mean, you both did. I, I'm, I'm a move into Sunfish. I didn't yeah. move up here. We didn't move up here until about 88 or 89. I don't know exactly when the it gra- was. The greater Huff area. We, we lived in the suburbs. I think we, you know, 
for the the people who are listen going to listen to this, you know, that are out of the country, because I mean, this could be worldwide, right? I mean, we're we're going big worldwide. Yeah. So Sunfish is located north of Huff and south of South. South of South, exactly right. Yeah. I, th- I think Kyle's dad came kind of was the one that, came that up he kind of coined that phrase. Yeah, yeah. I've, heard, I've heard people. Uh, Brandon, yeah. I think was the yeah back in the days before you had uh, Google Maps and, and GPS. Uh, dad ran a trucking company here, and so you had parts guys or salesmen or whatever they was looking for you all the time, uh-huh. and so they'd be like, "Just where exactly is Sunfish?" And he'd say, "We're just south of South." Yeah. Then there would be a long pause. <laughs> and then there would be, uh, well, can you get a little more specific than that? Yeah. Then you'd really give him some directions. Oh, yeah. But yeah, uh-huh. yeah, he kind of coined that phrase. We were just south of south. So so your dad owning the trucking company, and then my dad, of course, being a mechanic and working on a lot of them, we grew up around a lot of characters, to say the least, that drove trucks for Gary over the years. Uh, I'm sure I'm sure we've got some stories we can add about some of them. Yeah, and then sitting, you know, I grew up in the store down here. You know, I got off the bus there and spent a lot of time in the summer there, and the drivers would come up, and, you know, the, the, the Gene Autrys and the, you know, the Lawrences of the bunch, they'd come up, and I'd, I'd get a dose of them up there. And so uh, it's it's a... They were a very unique cast of characters, but it was. That, great, great people, no great complaints. guys, what you said, hardworking yeah. guys, uh, you know, just just some of the very best yeah, when I, you're a kid kid you know when people treat you good as a kid you don't ever forget it i, I, don't, I don't care what to grow up to be i know. think one of them that would come in and, and play video games with you mom had to call down a few times oh yeah she? yeah there was a, of course when you're young like that at the time you think man these guys are old but looking back they probably was in their 30s or something like that i was talking to a buddy of mine the other day uh, scott avery yes and uh we were together when 9 11 happened we were driving down the road. We were on the Calibiate stretch, yes. or Chally Beat. Uh-huh. If you see the sign, that's mm-hmm. how it looks. When the first plane hit, mm-hmm. and so we were down on 31W when the second plane hit. And I remember looking at him saying, "You know, that I don't know what's going on. But this is not mm-hmm. this is not an yeah. accident. You knew it was something. Something's up, right? Yeah. yeah. And so you know, we were working together in Franklin, and by the time we got down there, you know, it was all everything had happened. And uh, we were glued to the TV for days. I mean, but anyhow, you know, we were talking about getting old and getting older and the gray in our beards and stuff like that. And I said, you realize when that happened, your your mom and dad were younger than what we are now. Right. I mean, it, it's time just gets away from you. Everybody's yeah. busy and, you know, we're all raising kids now and stuff like that. And looking back, those people we thought were old at the time, maybe not weren't so old. Exactly, exactly. And so, uh, you know, I think John A. was about... Uh, late sixties, maybe seventy, when he passed away. Well, that's not that old. You think? No, at the it. time you thought. Yeah, at the he, time, he's, I thought, he's, oh, he's, he's had ancient. a good life. Yeah. yeah, he's had a good life. And now you look at it, you're like, that's gonna be here for an hour. <laughs> Ain't too far away. Mm-hmm. That's so. the truth. That's the truth. Uh, so give us your best Long Acre driver story. Oh man, there's so many. I, I don't know that I've got a a good long story. I've got tidbits. Uh, uh, man, I made them earn it back in the day. Of course, I'm. Uh, we moved up here. I'm about eight or nine years old, or something like that. And uh, dad, uh, my dad passed away when I was 15. So about uh, seven, six, seven years there of, of those trucks being literally 25 yards from the house. And so uh, shaking your shaking any, your bed when they come in. Any, right? I mean, any, it's right there. Any dead animal that was found on. <laughs> <laughs> Long Acre Farms ended up in somebody's truck. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I put several frogs, uh, several possums, a skunk or two. Uh, of course, you know, greasing door handles, uh, CB greasing mics. CB mics. That was just that was just kind of a kind of a thing, you know. Yeah. Uh, one that I do remember that maybe was a little over the top. Now that I look back, uh, the shop that we had it was just tremendously big. And you couldn't heat it for anything. We had one of those stoves that had the two barrels, you know, the mm-hmm. one that's got the fire on the bottom and then the, uh, the heat on the top and had some uh, oil running into it to make it that much hotter. And I had found a nickel. And so I put it on the stove. I think, man, this is really funny to let this nickel get hot. I'll do something with it later. And the, the same guy that you was talking about that uh, played video games with me, his... His handle was Porky, which I think that's kind of funny. We've all got nicknames around here. I don't know if we want to talk about that later or not, but very rarely do you talk call anybody by their name. Yeah. He was introduced as Jeremy and you're Brandon, but you're Bub and Donkey to me. Yeah, you, right. Yeah. You know, uh-huh. I'm Kyle, but I'm probably Skeet or something like that uh-huh. to you guys. Uh, but anyway, Porky, uh, he was standing there, and Porky always had his uh, uniform shirt unbuttoned about two buttons, wore jogging pants uh, continuously, winter or summer. 
And so because I'm, that was the only thing that fit. The, uh, <laughs> They were loose fitting, I think. Okay. <laughs> comfort. Yeah, comfort. Yeah, they were for comfort, I believe. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, I think, well, I'm going to flip this nickel. He'll catch it, and this will be really funny. And, and it's hot. And it's hot. So I've got on a pair of leather gloves, you know. I, I'm prepared. And uh, I grab this nickel, and I just I flip it. And about that time, I say, Porky, and it hits him right <laughs> below the neck and sticks. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, no, I know this is bad. So my patented move was run to mom. Yeah. <laughs> you know, run to the house. And he was a swatting and thumping and, and got that thing off of there. And so I don't see him for a couple of days, but he was branded with is Thomas still, Jefferson's head. Is he still alive? Well, I don't know. Brandon tried to reach out to him on Facebook uh, some time yeah, ago and never, and never, never got a response. Back, so I don't know. Uh, but what, what Brandon was talking about earlier, another funny one. So he would come over and play. I had a Super Nintendo, which at the time was... That's cut, that state was, of the art. That was state of the art. That was cutting edge. I had Street Fighter 2 Turbo. And we would have a tournament, and that tournament would be uh, you used every guy, and whoever beat all the guys wins. And like I said, Porky at the time was probably 30, and I'm 13 or something Uh like that. We're back there playing, and I've got a turbo controller, and I've got all the latest and greatest, and he's just got the standard equipment, you know? (laughs) Yeah, he's behind He's I'd be wearing him out. He'd get to cussing and ranting. Mom would come back here and throw that door open. You keep that language down, or you're out of here. You know, a 30-year-old man, (laughs) 13. Oh, oh, sorry, Max. Right. That's exactly I'm sorry, Max. Right. Hey, she had to bluff on those guys. She had oh, to bluff yeah. on us all. She had, my mom was superwoman back yeah. in the day. Uh, Dad was sick well, a lot with probably, his health. He, she probably wrote the check. She yeah. wrote the check. She, yeah. uh, I mean, she made it happen a lot of times when he was in the hospital and whatnot, this and that. But uh, it was it, it was really fun growing up around these guys. Yeah. And, and uh, you you talked about Gene Autry. Uh, his name's Gene Haynes. Yeah. Uh, and he's, we, he passed away too. He did he? pass away. All those guys uh, that I know of, but maybe one or two, have since uh, passed away. J.C. Miller, yeah. just a, I mean, great guy. I never could figure out with J.C. You know, uh, we all called him DJ. Yes. And my dad would call him J.C. Mm-hmm. And so we would, you know, dad. My dad had a propane company. We would take DJ mm-hmm. in my world uh-huh. up to, you know, taking propane up on the hill uh-huh. and. Dad would call him J.C. So, I mean, for years, I thought that they were twins. Yes. And so, <laughs> it, it was it was a place to grow up. Well, to my understanding, so J.C. was his real name. When they were young, him and his brothers would play church. Now, this okay. is what I was told. I don't know how true it is, so I'm not telling you it's true. I'm telling you it's true that I was told. Mm-hmm. And his brother was the preacher, and, and, other was, and he was the deacon. And so, he was deacon... Joy was his real name. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, Joy C. Miller. And so he was Deacon Joy, DJ. Huh. So, you know, whether always, it's true or not, I don't know. I always thought it's funny. They lived up on that hill, uh-huh. Sawmill Hill. Uh-huh. And they, you know, just, it was just, I mean, it, it, it was, the houses weren't big, nice, fancy houses like today. And there are several old trailers up there and stuff. But his boy and his nephew finished top one and two of their, their high school class. Absolutely. And they they were incredibly intelligent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and his other son Wes, mm-hmm. which I guess Wes still living yeah. up there. Yeah. Oh, well, I don't know up out of Burbank. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Wes is the only person I know who go buy a brand new vehicle and have a fender primer down before the end of the week. <laughs> I mean, that's just a, <laughs> the truth of it. I got a good Wes story for you too. I'll tell you in a minute. So, but anyhow, uh, he was an artist. He is a very talented yes, artist. He is. People don't realize he's probably one of the. He can draw whatever you want, wherever you want, and he is good. There was a gentleman who uh, delivers mail. Did you know about the mail buggy that caught on fire up there, right by Wes's? Uh, hmm. I don't particularly know what happened. Well, the garbage truck out. caught on fire too. Up there. Well, it's sh- you know shorted out okay. or whatever. It starts smoking. He pulls it over. Wes comes out, and by the time they're out there, it's just too far gone, and. Uh, the, the guy who drove the mail buggy was telling me about it. He said, I'm just here to tell you, if you ever have a vehicle burn, you want it to be with Wes Miller because he knows exactly what's going to happen. <laughs> he said, just be careful. said, it's going to blow. One of them tires going to blow. He said, just a minute, boom, one of the tires. Blow. He said, it'll be another one. Yeah. He said, he just walked me through it step by step. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell my Wes story while you're at it. I mean, this is, it was funny. So I worked for the local electric company for, 15 years and the pole at jc's old house which is at the end of that road was broke 
and it was still it was broke and still standing. We saw it one night. We were going up the next day and change it. And it was the time of the year where it was you know cool of the morning and it warm up. I like today. It warm up decent. You know, sixty degrees during the day. And what happens is that wire. It'll get cold at night and it'll retract. So it'll get tighter and it, if it's got a belly in it, it'll pull up. And then when it, it gets warm, it'll sag down. So we had a big deuce and a half, like army truck with a digger unit on the back of it. And it had big float tires on it. And I'm going down that little, little blacktop road and I get to Wes's. And of course, Wes operates almost a salvage yard. Right. And there's cars everywhere. And so I slow down, and I ease through all those cars, and I go on down the end of the road. We work down there till about lunch. Somebody said, you got your lunch? I said, no. They said, well, go get your lunch, and we'll meet you somewhere we'll eat. I take off in that truck. I mean, I, I'm rolling cold, as the kids say today. And I get to where those cars are, and he had moved the car that I was really trying to watch. Well, I never even slowed down. <laughs> and out of the corner of my eye, I see something move, and it is a pole across the road from his house and it is it is falling and I thought what's that pole falling for and then I realized that the wire going from that pole to the pole at his house is hung on top of my truck and I'm running about 50 and so I mean I stomp the brakes and I hear commotion and when I get out I have broke three poles on one side of the road and broke Wes's meter pole and it has drug it through all his old cars there's a Ford Ranger turned up on its side and a 1970 model Dodge that he's been aiming to restore. And he was mad. I imagine. He cooled down, but yes. I mean, I, I just, just getting out and seeing that cut Ranger turned up on its side. <laughs> Poles broke. I laughed and laughed. I'll see him out today and he'll say, I can't believe you done that. <laughs> Hell, I can't believe I did either, Wes. But. Uh, so, so there's... there's Two lawnmower stories that in well, this episode you, I've be, already promised. Well, before you move on, do you want to tell about Gene Autry and the, the little Mustang down at the old shop? I'm sure you've heard your dad tell that several times. I don't, I don't know that I could do it justice, but I can tell a part two of that that I was involved in. So the the one about the calf. The calf, yeah. So Autry had been apparently running till dark every night for. I don't know how long, and but they knew time. it was they knew it was gonna be dark when Autry got in and he had one of the little small I don't know what year They're the ugly Mustang. Mustang twos. Twos, yeah. yeah, yeah the little twos. mini cars. Yeah. yeah. And one so, step up from a Maverick. <laughs> yes, yes. And so they decide your grandpa Kurt has had a calf die and they decide that they'll take that calf and it'll be funny, they'll put it in Gene Autry's car. So they put the calf, and I don't know who all was in on it. I know Dad, Gary, Dad and Gary, and I don't know who all else. They put the calf in the car and get its legs worked down in the floorboard, and they tie its front hooves to the steering wheel. So they caught it before stiff or after stiff? I think it was still pretty a little stiff. stiff. They, having stiff to pry. Thought, yeah. they, they took grass string and tied its front hooves to the steering wheel, and it's sitting up in there, and I think they even put a Long Acres cap on it. And it's sitting in there, and so Autry comes in, and the big truck drives by it and never sees it in his car, parks the truck. So for for the people listening listening in other countries, Long Acres Farms was the name of your dad's truck. That was truck. Yeah, that was truck. Yeah, I don't guess we touched on yeah. that. You'll see the building in our artwork, too, if you look, uh, for the people that's not from around here. But... Uh, out of the country. They they knew Worldwide. they knew from they knew from I guess Autry's vehicles that the interior light did not work in Autry's car. <laughs> <laughs> so so he drives around, parks the big truck, comes in and talks to him, and and there's a bunch there waiting on him to get in. As well, long as there's a bunch there, Autry's not going to leave. So Dad said it took forever, and finally Autry says, "Well, I better go home." And so he goes out there. And he, he tries to get, just fall in the car, basically. And, and there's, there's something in there. <laughs> there's so a he jumps like... back out. It scares him. He gets his lighter out, and he flick, flick, flick. Huh? A cave. Yeah. <laughs> so, so fast forward 20 years, I've heard this story my whole growing up life. And I think, how funny that would be to do something like that to somebody. Yeah. I'm coming down 1075 in the green bean. That's my truck that I drove when I was young. 96 Ford F-150, 100 green. And you still have. Still right? have. Yeah. Uh, and a deer jumps out in front of me, and I hit the deer <coughs> right in the head. Uh, doe, not very big. Don't don't even much more than make a dent on the truck, and kills are just graveyard dead. I mean, just immediately. 
and I think, man, what am I, I going to do? I need to get out of the road at least. And so I, I back up and I pull the deer out of the road. And as I'm pulling out of the road, my my cogs get to turn and I think, hey, this will work good because Autry is driving for my cousin now at the time who bought the trucks off my mom after my dad passed away. I think we can recreate this. This is like those pictures they take, you know, it's 20 years later of the, the family pictures. What is it about uh, us wanting to redo, you know, re, replay the pranks that we've heard about our parents it's, play, it, similar to the out here on this road? Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's just, a, our, that's our legacy. That's what we've got to uh-huh. live up to. You know, yeah. other people have doctors in their family and, and they become doctors and we just pull pranks, I think. <laughs> this is what we do. So I was a uh, buddy of mine, Josh Cancer, was mechanicing down there at the time. That's where I was going to meet him. I throw the deer in the back of the truck, roll in there. I'm like, hey, what do you think about this? He's like, oh, that's perfect. Oh, yeah, that's great perfect. idea. That's perfect. Yeah, yeah. good. Let's do so it. we, but instead of putting it in Autry's personal vehicle, because it's not there, obviously, we put it in, in the big truck he's driving. So we set it up in there, tie the hoofs to the steering wheel, put a brad white trucking hat on her head on that doe's head got her i mean she's up there cruising it is recreated recreated yeah, peterbilt yep <laughs> and i go home and don't think any more about it well what i didn't think about was that calf was frozen dead this deer was alive was three warm. minutes ago warm yeah. it bleeds out in the truck <laughs> Audrey shows up that next morning to get the truck. He thinks it's like a mafia symbol for one of his one of his family that he's been into it with. <laughs> Brad's sister calls me. It's five o'clock in the morning, and I answer the phone. And, and she's mad. She is. Well, she's trying to find out first to make sure that it's not. She's like, "You better tell me the truth." And I mean, right now, did you put a deer in Audrey's truck? I said, "Well," she said, "This is serious." I said, "Yeah, I did." Well, that thing was just an awful mess. He had to take the day off work. He was so upset. He had to take... So, needless to say, that was the last time uh, that we put animals. And he was he was up my age at that point. Right? Yes, he was. Yeah, yeah, yeah he was. <laughs> Man, he he was a good guy though. He he worked on the farm when he wasn't trucking, and that's uh, my memories of him. Him hitting trucking. You know, I didn't. I never was around the your old shop a whole lot. I'd stop in there and, and put my life in your hands with the Bigfoot. Remember right, the Power I do, Wheels, I do. Power I Wheels Bigfoot. Yeah, I yeah. never remember it working. We'd just push Bullet. it to the There's top of the hill and roll it down. Yeah, I think you shoved me off that hill behind that shop one time on that thing. I'd like, hey, We'd roll it out of that side door. When, yeah, when I remember. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. It was down that bank. Yeah. yeah. Uh, when they got that cab tractor, which we'd never, I think he had a cab tractor years ago when they weren't great, but he got that new cab tractor in 95, I think it was. Uh, it might have been 96, but it was right in there. And Autry was bailing hay, and uh, me, and, remember me and Bub, we was there at the at the building, and, and, and Dad looks out there, and he's like, I'm going to go check on Autry. So we all just, didn't you go the with deer, us? The deer guy was still there, I think, wasn't he? Did you, did you go with Yeah. Us? I think we all yeah. just rode we out there. We all went. And the, all the windows are fogged up on the- It's getting late afternoon. On, on the tractor. I mean, you can't even hardly see out of it, and Autry's reaching up and, and doing this and that. Yeah, huh? yeah. So <laughs> Dad goes up and opens the door, and the, his byword, he wouldn't say G-O-D, you know, he would say G-O-T, God. Got, got down. He said, how do you turn this got down air down? <laughs> yeah, I thought, so he's, wasn't the deer guy still there? He may have and been. And I think I know he was, up and opened the door and asked yeah, him that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he, was, he didn't he, know how he to was, turn it down. He, he was freezing, on whatever oh, said on. He was freezing to death in there. Well, uh, Leonard Duval called me one time. He bought those Kubota tractors with the cabs. Yes. And Spike had got in there messing around with, with the controls on it. You know, the, all air conditioners just have a button. You, you push, turn the air off. He wanted me to come up there and charge air up on us. And Leonard, that tractor's pretty new. Yeah, but the air quit working on it. I got out there and he got to full around. And I looked and Spike had hit that button. I turned it, hit that, boom, you know, the air come Here on. come back. He said, how much owe you? I said, $500. He said, really? That's not just messing with you. <laughs> Did he say, oh, hello? Yeah. <laughs> that He's was like, Leonard's by word. Oh, like, hello. <laughs> yeah. So we think we ought to tell the, that story. Uh, let, let, we, we might later okay in later episodes give okay. them something to look forward to yeah. y'all need to tell these mower stories I promised them to people <laughs> why, why? I thought you just wanted me to be on to back you guys up nah to... well we've got to we've got to prove to some of the people who don't know you just how tight you are <laughs> yeah. well now keep in mind too this is uh, year one of being married okay 
you know, things pretty pretty well, slim. The, the snapper wasn't year one, though. That was on a... Well, true. Well, we had to push mower for two years. Okay. <laughs> it lasted so, two so years. So you got to have the push mower started. Okay, so Heather, uh, Heather's my wife. Um, we Who uh, is not from Sunville. She is we, from Cle- she's from Cleveland that yeah. you were so, talking about and, earlier. And, and let's back up and say that Kyle had always, as a bachelor, hired his yard mowed, but Heather wanted to start mowing the yard when they got married. Save money. Save money. That's yeah. right. That's so, exactly right. all three of us have married... Well, I mean, we all marry girls outside of Sunfish, True. right? Because there's not really, I mean, we're kin to everybody. Right, here. right. And so that's the reason why, right? So yep. she is from the other side of the river, yes. as we like to yep. say. And you know? I brought her all the way over here, which I might as well have taken her to a, a different country as foreign, far as she's concerned. A foreign country. <laughs> technically, <laughs> technically, we have all married women from that side of the river. Because where I live at now is the other side of the river, and Austin's from the other side of the river, so we have all married women from other sides. That's funny. Our, our county split in two by Green River, and depending on which side of the river you live on is this side of the river and the other side of the river. Mm-hmm. So yeah. this is this side of the river, yeah. and, and south of Green River is the other side yeah. of the river. We are on the good side of Bear Creek anyway. <laughs> the good side of Bear Creek. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, as as, as uh, Donkey said, I married Heather. She's from Cleveland. I hired my yard mowed up to that point. Heather wants to mow, and I don't own a mower. I don't have a mower. So there was a gentleman that lived down the road on the schoolhouse road, Charlie Duval. He's since passed away. He was fixing up uh, some old mowers and redoing them, refurbishing them, and uh, <laughs> so tillers, tillers, small, small engine work. Engine work. Yep. Uh-huh. So he's got a little garage there beside his double wide. Uh, me and a friend of mine, we go down there, I peck on the door, and uh, the first thing right off the bat, Charlie comes to the door with nothing on but his whitey tighties. <laughs> I said, I said uh, Charlie, I want to do some business with you. Oh, okay, let me get some clothes on. <laughs> so we go around the side, and he comes out the back and takes us in the little shop there. He said, what are you looking for? I said, I'm looking for a lawnmower. He said, well, I don't have anything but three push mowers. I said, well, that'd probably be all right. So we go out there and look, and they're lined up in the middle of the garage yeah, floor. Yeah, God forbid you buy her a rider to mow two acres with. I mean. <laughs> well, now, she teaches. She's off during the summer, so yeah. if it took a little extra she's time. She probably exercise, too. Right? I'm sure she did. Yeah. I don't know. They didn't have any kids at the no time. No kids so. at the time. Right, right. So uh, he says, this right here is my best mower. He yeah. said, you prime it three times, said it'll start and run just purr like a kitten. So he reaches down and hits that primer bulb three times. And guys, I'm telling you what, he cranked on it five minutes. <laughs> well, he steps back and he puts his, I don't know if you remember, he puts his hand on his chin like this and he says, maybe that's my best one. Yeah. And points to the one right beside of it. Yeah. Not to lose a sale, you know. Yeah, he was confused. So, he's right, been, he's yeah. mistaken. He said, maybe that's my yeah. best one. So he goes down, hits the primer on it, fires that dude up, and it does. First crank, it fires up. Now, I want you to kind of get a visual of this. So he's standing here. I'm standing like where I'm sitting. Joe is standing like maybe where Bub is, and this mower is in the middle of the floor running with nobody touching it. And I'm thinking, no safety know, handle, man. You know, dad. you know, yeah. we, when we lived at the, uh, this house, the Bayford Stone house, we push mowed, but it had a kill handle on it. I, I said, Charlie, every time I had a push mower, it had a kill handle. When you let go of it, it it would die. Yeah, he said, well, these don't have that. Yeah, and I said, well, I, I can, I can <laughs> see, model. yeah, I can see, I can see that. I said. Uh, you shut it off. He said, well, you can run it into some tall grass. <laughs> I said, well, okay. He said, he said, but here's what I usually do. And he jerks a screwdriver out of his pocket and knocks a spark plug wire off of it. Kills it dead or the hammer. I said, well, now, Charlie, I said, this is for my wife. I said, I can't be having her take a screwdriver. She'll never understand that. So once again, he puts his hand on his chin like this. He thinks, he said, I know what we can do. He goes over to his toolbox. He gets one of them extra long zip ties about like that. <laughs> zip ties around the plug wire. <laughs> puts her puts it on there. Yep. He said, tell her just pull that when she gets ready to pull it off. I said, what do you want for it? He said, I'll take $10. I said, I'll take it. <laughs> so I bring it home and she mows with it for, <coughs> for two years. That's funny. So then he decides he'll upgrade her to a rider. Yeah. Bought her a snapper. Rear engine snapper. Uh-huh. Force Gump mower. Force Gump Dale Logston mower. Dale Logston had one for years. I own one now. Yeah. Yeah. Mowed good. It was a 28 inch cut. Mine is. But too. compared to, you know, a push mower, it was. Yeah, she gained like, what, four or six oh, inches? Oh, guaranteed. Yeah. yeah. And, and speed, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. But the catch to the snapper was. It didn't have a battery. You had to pull start it. And, and she didn't know. Well, that she, it just needed a battery. Well, right? he, Heather has always had trouble. She's never been around. Like, we've all tinkered with 
things from the time we were little. We all had tillers and lawn mowers and four wheelers and this and that. So the concept most of, of the time we're junk and we were forced to tinker on. Well, that's right. right. And, and, but the concept of a choke is foreign to Heather. Yeah. So to choke it. Pull start it. It pull start it easy. I'm, I'm gonna take up for myself on this. <laughs> for you, I'm not gonna be the for villain. You. It pull start it easy for Kyle. Heather's so, out there putting every ounce yeah, she but, can but in she, to get she, it pull started. She didn't started. know to choke, and then once it run, flip it down to run. So yeah. she had trouble with that. Which a lot of times, if I was home, I would start it, and then she would mow. But this particular day, and I, I'm gonna let Bub tell this because I wasn't there. Uh, uh, oh, no, you was there when it happened. I wasn't there. I just your dad was there. No, dad was there. No, she jumped me when I come in. I wasn't oh, even I there. Oh, I thought you was there. No, I wasn't there. Uh. Uh-uh. Okay. No. So, so dad's there. Comes she, by and sees her to my remembrance. Sees her, but he tells the battery down front of her, right? Yeah, yeah. She's she's cranking and cranking and cranking, trying to start. And so Jimmy's great neighbor, Gabby, we call him. He's driving by and sees her trying to start this mower and it won't start and so he's going to pull in and help her which she knows gabby and uh he pulls in there and, and he's going to start it but he tells her <laughs> why don't why don't he buy you a battery for well, this and she that, says and she a much, battery and how much were batteries at this probably fifteen dollars i don't know yeah, they're high they now but at the time <laughs> well that was high then <laughs> he could probably got a he could probably got a blim for ten yeah <laughs> He says, why don't you have that tight end and husband of yours put a battery in yeah. this where you can start off the key? And she says, a battery? She didn't know what that electric started on it. <laughs> so guess what Big K had to do when yeah. he comes? Yeah, buy her a battery. battery. Yes, yeah, buy her a battery and put it in there. So a uh, guy at work, I was looking for a mower for the down to lake. Guy at work says, I've got one of them old snapper mowers. He said, I bought it from a little lady. He said, it's, it's, I ain't got a scratch on it. I said, what do you want for it? He said, $300. He said, it's got a grass catcher and all with it. And I said, bring it in. Or I said, send me some pictures of it. He sent me some pictures. I said, bring it in, I'll buy it. And so we, uh, he brings it in. We go look at it. Are they coming for us there? What do I, don't hear know. I hear some sirens there. That's unusual. In Sunfish, if you hear a it's, siren, it's, you look. It's not unusual right now because the bridge is closed on 70, oh, so every run has to come, okay. come through this way. Yeah, yeah. True. So anyhow, he brings this mower in, and I mean, it is like new. I mean, best looking snapper I, I saw and he says now it doesn't have electric start I said are you sure he said I'm positive I said so I told him your story mm-hmm. he thought it was great <laughs> so anyhow it doesn't have electric start so we get it and we take it down to the lake and I mow with it mows great now even though we don't have a big lot down at the lake after using a, a zero turn with six foot cut going back to that is very daunting I mean, it's... Well, it's three to one. Right. Yeah, yeah I three mean, you, you have to have several beers to mow this yard. Uh-huh. And so, you know, to, to start it, you have to push the brake pedal down and lock it over. It's got a lock in the column, then you get off and start it. Mm-hmm. So my wife decides she's going to mow. And I hear her out there pulling and pulling and pulling. I'm like, what in the world is she doing? I go out there. I said, you don't know how... I know how to start a lawnmower. I said, obviously you don't, or you'd push that brake pedal down and slide this lock over. You know, she's never used anything but the zero turn. Well, for years, anyhow. Right. Like I said, perfect mower. I put my 17 year old son on it. And he said, well, what do I need? I don't want to tear it. I said, you can't tear this thing up. Just mow with it. Oh, he's your son. You shouldn't have told him that. He didn't make, a, he didn't make one round around the yard. And I hear, what <laughs> the hell was that? I jump up and run out there. And he had found a root in the yard. It was like a football sticking up out of the ground that I had been weed eating around. And he's, he's gonna mow to, over it. Oh, he's gonna cut it off for me. He's gonna cut it off for me. I got this, Dad. He he bent the where the spindle goes through the deck. He bent the deck. I yeah. throw it away. Yeah, it's I, put, well, I got a new deck, another deck to put on it. But those are great mowers. So, but you might so. get a you might get a snapper sponsorship out of this hey yeah. hey we've had to offer already for a sponsorship well i run into a guy today at uh at the feed mill and said he said I was, he was asking if the podcast was going hot today or live or something like that i said yeah he said uh, he said i'm not thinking about sponsoring so i had a, a guy we, asked me about it uh, and i said well let's see let's see how it goes well, we, we've got uh, us two we've got to sponsor our wives first thing before yeah. we yeah so we'll have to see how it goes mm-hmm. right yeah yeah, yeah. Sure. so but it, even though kyle's a fine upstanding citizen elected official now there's been a few times in his life he's had some run-ins with the law just because 
that's what you do when you're younger and driving and drive with a headlight out and you know things of that nature so so there's a few stories i wanted him to hit on uh one being uh, the bgpd and their lights shorten out okay so that's that's a good one uh Several, I don't know that I've heard this. Several, several years you ago. Had my attention. <laughs> uh, I was just a rider on this one. So I was with a couple of friends and uh, we were coming out of Bowling Green. It was late. It was late one night. And we were coming uh, what I call the old way down the bypass. And then we're going to cut over to 185. And that's how we come in mm-hmm. from Bowling Green. We're coming through there. And uh, my friend David, he says, I think that car behind us is flashing their lights at us. And I look up in the rearview mirror wearing my cousin's dually, that uh, that Dodge dually that Brad had, that, that uh, diesel truck. I said, oh, it's just where we're sitting up high. I said, it's hitting, you know, it's hitting bumps. And we go a little further, a little further. We're running 30 miles an hour, 35 miles an hour, something like that. Y'all are, y'all are still in town? We're still in town. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we're just coming out, you know, coming out kind of like there where the old Lucky Strikes building is. Where yeah, Fleet Pride's Fleet at. Pride's at. <clears throat> So we come up through there, and, and uh, he said, I'm, I'm going to pull over. I think they're trying to get our attention. So we pull over, and it pulls over behind us, and I look back, and it's Bowling Green Police. <laughs> and about the time that it pulls over, there are two more that come in, just like we're in a high-speed pursuit. <laughs> Y'all have messed up. We have messed <laughs> up. Yeah. And the guy gets on the loudspeaker and says, show us your hands. And he looks at me, eyes big as half dollars, says, what I do? I said, show him your hands. Yeah. <laughs> so he puts his hands out the, out the window. He says, open the door. So he opens the door and gets out and uh, walk backwards, you know, to the back of the vehicle. Well, the, the officer comes up, and about that time, there was one that come up on the passenger side where I'm at and says, tells me to exit the vehicle. And I mean, when I come out, this officer is giving David down the road. I mean, giving him the what for. And David's like, why do you think we're running? We're going 30 miles an hour. And he says, don't you see those? And when he turns around and points, his light bar's not working. <laughs> and we stand there, and he is just dumbfounded. And then it flashes and then goes right back off. And I'm telling you what, if that guy could have crawled under the sewer grate, he would have. He apologized to us 19 ways. So he, he, he had them on the whole time. Yes. And they hadn't been working. Yes, and they were not working, just his headlights. And y'all just been driving. And we just driving 30 mile an hour through Bowling Green. And I, I mean, no telling, you know, we've got a pursuit of this Hot or that. Pursuit Hot pursuit of 30, pursuit, 30 mile an hour. But he apologized to us every which way but loose. And, and, and we get back in the, in the vehicle and he's on home. Oh, man. Oh, and then there, there's another good one. State trooper pulls you over for one headlight. Chad with you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Chad. So, Chad. Jack. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I saw him the other yeah. night. Oh, yeah. Been a long time. So we had went to Morgantown to pick up a load of tires. There was a fella that was wholesaling some tires down there to me at the time. Uh, we were doing that back and forth, and I'd taken the green bean down there to pick them up. And uh, we load them up and are coming back. Uh, down 70 and it's it's like well i mean i'd close the station at 10 o'clock i i was working at the station then i worked at the gas station at that time at auto repair shop and uh, we were coming up 70 and, and probably going you know too fast probably going 60 mile an hour whatever it was one headlight had a headlight out mo green bean had a headlight out for years yeah that, that's kind of how you knew me that was my bat signal <laughs> <laughs> and so we're coming up through there and state trooper sitting there at the corner market Pulls out behind us, throws the blue lights on. We pull in at the Sunfish Round Hill Road. He comes up to the car, and he's he's not happy. He thinks we've stolen these tires. And he's really giving me the, the third degree about these tires. I'm like, no, I, you know, I buy them down here, and we, we swap out, and I've got a ticket. And so while he's going over that, uh, I guess his partner had come up on the passenger side. Y'all had no idea there was another one. Just knew, just thought it was him, and he pecks on the window with the back side of his, his flashlight. Yeah, yeah, his back light, and Chad screams like a <laughs> <laughs> screams like a woman. And as soon as he screams, he reaches and grabs that door handle to open it because he thinks I guess something's the matter. Yeah. And we had both been dipping all night long. We had a cup. I mean, it was two thirds the way full of Ambeer. 
And when he opens that door, he knocks that Ebbier out on that trooper's shiny shoes. Oh, it God. just covers <laughs> them up. And he turns around and looks at me just like this and says, we're going to jail for that one. <laughs> I said, oh, I hope not. <laughs> and fortunately, the trooper had a little humor about him. And, yeah. and uh, he, he's over the ditch cleaning his shoe off, you know. And, and he tells us, you know, just, just slow it down and go on our way. So two, two close calls there and, and nothing, nothing so, to come of it. When Lindsay, my wife, lost her driver's license for speeding and it took the flock of troopers to run us down on the interstate, one slipped up beside us. Yeah, this one's at her window, ripping her over speeding, mm-hmm. and I'm I've got the uncontrollable giggles over it <laughs> because I can't stop. I mean, it just I, I've been telling her you're going to jail, you know, and I mean he is tearing her up on the side of this. Were y'all in the vet? Yeah, yeah, we were in. A, we'd been in this vet, and she'd been running a hundred down the interstate in North Carolina and not trying to pass somebody. Probably for forty five minutes, we've been running a hundred. In a 55. Mm-hmm. And so this trooper is ripping her hind in, and I'm sitting there, and I've got the uncontrollable giggles because I'm innocent in all this, right? I've not done anything. But normally it would be him in the driver's seat. I was going to say, yeah. Uh, yeah. he's yeah. just laughing because he thinks, if I was over there, it'd be one tenth. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, the funny part was, was they, uh, you know, we saw this trooper, and, and I'm like, hey, did you see that trooper? Yeah, but I slowed down. He didn't see me. Well, he didn't, but the other two did. The radio. But yeah. Yeah, the radio's yeah, faster yeah, than we the were. The radio's We faster. may have been doing 100, but he was doing a lot faster than that. Right. So anyhow, so that trooper slips up, and he pecks on the window of that Corvette. And I'm, you know, uncontrollable giggles. And he, like you said, that flashlight, clunk, clunk. And I did about, like, Chad, I squalled out, scared me to death. I think they both may have grabbed at their gun. I, but, yeah, they were serious. You know, uh, she lost her license for a year over that. And uh, I, th- I really think that's the only reason she married me. Because you know, she uh, needed a chauffeur. Well, that and she needed the name change. So an alias. She was looking yeah, for an alias. Yeah, an alias. Yeah. And then the bad part, she got another ticket back home before that one didn't come in in the mail. Well, then y'all get then y'all get a letter from the HOA about racing in the subdivision when you lived in the subdivision. She got to ripping through the subdivision. I don't know if we got a letter about that, but we did get a letter about the. Uh, I had a tractor. With no um, hood, driving it around. In I had tra- yeah, I'd put a cl- I'd clutched a tractor <laughs> in uh, their garage in the in the, house. In the neighborhood, yeah. which the old man cross street thought was great. He mm-hmm. was older and he would check me out. Uh, but it was so. The start of the tractor story is I had bought this tractor from a guy down here in Sunfish, and Lindsay and I we hadn't been married that long. And I mean this this subdivision it was it, it was one of the nicer ones. Mm-hmm. It's you don't you don't work on vehicles in mm-hmm. garages in this subdivision. And so we're going down there to get the tractor, and she said, "What what barn are you going to put this in?" I said, "It needs a it, it needs a clutch in." Or no, the motor was stuck. I said, it, it, "The motor stuck in. I need to work on it. You know, I need to do something with it." She said, well, "What barn are you going to put it in?" I said, "Well, I'm going to put it in the garage." She said, "What garage?" I said, "The garage at home, our garage." She's like, "No." She's way more worried about the neighbors than I was. I didn't care, you know. And I said, "No, it's going back to there." And so we. She's like, you can't take this up there and put it. Yeah, we're going to put it in the garage. We'll do it at dark. Nobody will know. And so I get get it in the garage, get the motor on stuff, do all everything I'm going to do to it. I don't put all the sheet metal back on it. I'm like, well, I need to drive this thing, right? You got to test it. Yeah, you got to test it. So this this subdivision had big, you know, a loop you could make. What well, better way to test drive yeah. a tractor with no hood? In the yeah, subdivision. The subdivision loop. Yeah. And no, I... Just to be honest with you, I didn't put. Did the, you put the exhaust? I on? didn't put the exhaust. On. Okay, I, th- I thought that was coming. <laughs> yeah, you knew you knew that was coming. And so I mean, around the subdivision I go, and it was hilly, boy. You'd hit them hills and that, that little old John Deere tractor, and it'd really beller, you know. <laughs> and so I don't remember. We got a letter on that, and then uh, I had a, I bought a gun safe, and I took my tractor from the farm here up there with a loader to set the gun safe off. Well, it'd sit up there for a few days on the trailer in the front yard. That's a no-no. Putting, you know, even having a vehicle out overnight's a no-no. No subdivisions, but a tractor on a gooseneck they don't like. Mm-hmm. But the one that kind of was the problem was we we bought that old cabin over here at Nolan, and the people who had had it since 1972, they were an older couple, and he had went in and gutted the the basement, and then he had got sick and passed away, and then it had just sit. Well, it had you know 40 years 
or, or 50 years of their possessions in it. Right. And she didn't know what she's going to do with them. She's an elderly lady. I said, just leave it. We'll take care of it. So Lindsay and I go down there one Saturday, and we take the trailer, and we load all this garbage up. There's a huge Oak Entertainment Center. Lindsay's like, how are you going to get that out of the house? I got the saws all, and we quartered it up, and we got it out of the house. In yeah. pieces. In pieces, yeah. <laughs> so... You know, you got to think smart when you're loading garbage on a flat trailer because it's not just going to blow off everywhere. So I put all the mattresses on top. Uh-huh. Strap Wake them down. Yeah, we need weight. Strap, strap them down. down. Now, they did have some monstrosity piss stains on them because <laughs> they were old mattresses, probably Absolutely. a lot of kids, sure. stuff like that. Might have been a murderer in there. Who knows? <laughs> I mean, just look at them. They were pretty bad. So <laughs> she said, where are you going to take this to? I said, I'm going to take it home. You can't take this home. I said, well, what am, it's Sunday. What am I going to do with it? Well, we're going to have to find some. We're going to take this down to Mom and Dad's and park it. I said, no. We're going to park it at the house. I'm going to go to work in the morning. I'm going to get the guys started. And then I'll run home, grab the truck and trailer, take it to the dump. No harm, no foul. We got home at 645 that night. That trailer left at 9 the next morning. And we got a nasty later, but it, I parked it in the front yard with all them piss paint mattresses. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a picture somewhere of that house, that truck trailer sitting in front of it. We, big old we might need that picture to share on the Facebook page. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, and so my wife's like, "Oh my gosh!" But the first time I, second time I brought her to Sunfish, mm-hmm. you know, she grew up in Western Kentucky, and she grew up on a farm. And she, you know, like she grew pimento peppers growing up, and she's worked. She's worked hard. She's not ever had an easy life. You know, her uh, dad's a coal miner, or was a coal miner. Her mom was post uh, worked for the post office. She's always worked. But I brought her to Sunfish, and I told her, I said, I'm going to take you down here. I said, Miss Sunfish is a different world. I said, it's everybody's laid back. You know, there's a lot of, you know, you may have struggled to understand a few of us. And I said, but but it's kind of anything goes. And so, like, the second time I had her down here, I was uh, up on the hill up there, and that dad had an old, one of those old Prowler campers. Mm-hmm. She said, what are you going to do with that old thing? Low I, Ridge. Low Ridge. That's, up a, on low that's, a, ridge. that's a famous landmark around yeah, here. Yeah. 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 Highest, it's the highest point in Edmondson or Grayson County. Is there. it really? Is yeah. it higher than Little Mountain? Yes. Wow. Yeah. I did not know and that. It is, it is 12 foot taller yeah. than Pullman's Hill. Okay. Verified with the GPS. I got you. Uh, so, anyhow... Uh, she said, what are you going to do with that old camper? Because, you know, Dad was a hoarder before he passed away. He saved everything. I threw most of it away. And I said, well, I said, I need to haul it to the junkyard. And she said, will they take it? I said, yeah. And I said, better yet, I'll take it down the road here to the people that lived at, at the end of the road. They may want it for scrap. You know, they'll tear it down for the aluminum and stuff. She said, oh, okay. So we'd worked up there that day, and we were going to go get a sandwich at Round Hill. We're going down the road, and there stood the mother out on the side of the road there. She said, you just pull in and see if she wants it. Okay. I pulled in. She said, oh, yeah, we'd love that. We, you know, they done tore Dad's old trailer down. Me and Brandon took it down there. <laughs> yeah, you about drug it and the tractor and all <laughs> off in the holler down there coming yeah. down the curve, yeah. got it off the... I don't think you're in the club if you've not moved a house trailer. With a tractor, With yeah. a tractor. I, well, moved, I put or, one in. Or with anything. Or with anything. That, the one we lived in for years, Dad moved with his ton truck from across Nolan Dam down to Pipe You moved one with a truck. I moved one with that, that three-quarter ton truck from across Nolan yeah. Dam. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're, we're going to get into that story later. <laughs> we're saving that one for another episode. <laughs> okay. I, I set one up that is still there. <laughs> Today, being lived in with that seventy four hundred, that cab was really? talking about. Yeah, go ahead. Didn't mean to interrupt. No, that's okay. So anyhow, <clears throat> so like he says, yeah, we'd love to have it. I said, okay, I'll bring it down sometime. So we started out of the driveway. And Lindsay said, we ought to just go get that before she changes her mind. Okay, so we go up there, and this trailer has not been moved in twenty years. It is sitting down in the mud. We back up there, and I take a tractor and loader and just pick the tongue up, sit it on the ball. Go take off, and the truck won't even pull it out of the mud. So I reached down, put it in four-wheel drive, and I mean, I just hard as I could go. Yank it up out of this hole. We take off down the road, or down the gravel road there coming off the hill, and there's that Pretty bank. Pretty steep. Yeah, Pretty that steep. bank that yeah. you, I run up on that bank, you know, sideways. And Jared Childress uh, was coming over to the house. His little brother bought something from him. He called, he said, hey, I'm at your house. I said, well, we'll be right there. Well, to go to the house, you had to turn left out of the driveway instead of turn right. So I make that left turn, and I look back, and that camper is fishtailing around behind me. <laughs> <laughs> She's going, we can't go this way. We can't. I said, you Here we just, are. You just hold on. <laughs> so you know those old fold-out steps? I do. From under the... So I got to hearing something. I looked, them steps had popped out, and the tire's flat. They scooting on the ground. <laughs> 
<laughs> so dad had put siding on that trailer. He had siding blowing off of it going down the road. And we go down there and Jared's like, what in the heck are you all doing? I said, oh, we're going camping, man. <laughs> so <laughs> we, we turned that thing around finally and get down there and drop it off. Back it up there and unhook it. I don't even put a block under it. I just take a bar and pop it up off the edge. Drive out. Drive out. <clears throat> Lady, Lady said they'll be living in that by the end of the week I said no you know the door was off of it mm-hmm. it had no door on it hadn't in years the ceiling had fell out I swear I come by two days later there's a piece of plywood over the door and the porch light was on <laughs> on the <laughs> <door."> <laughs> I swear I believe it I know, where, like, I know, I know where it's at <laughs> or where it was yeah so oh, it was a mess so, so Kyle's got something special in store for us about some of his great uncles and some of their words. Yeah, you mentioned it a while ago. You said, you told Lindsay there might be some things you don't understand. And that's it's something I think that's kind of maybe not unique to our community. A lot of rural communities across the, the country, they kind of got their own lingo about things. Yeah, and we also use words around here differently than, than the rest of the world. Right. Well, I, wrote, I took the liberty of writing down a few. Okay. Uh, I know you guys are the hosts. Uh, but I wanted to quiz you all. I didn't know how, how tough you was going to make it on me, so I was going to throw a little fire back at you. Okay. So I'm going to give you guys a word, and I want you to use it in a sentence, and uh, then I'll tell you how my people use it. Okay. Uh, let's start here with zinc. Zinc. I bought some bolts at Rural King the other day that were zinc-coated. There you go. Now, I wash my hands in the zinc. <laughs> Wagner's. 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 I think Wagner's make headlights, don't they? Is that a brand of headlight? Yeah, Wagner? Or, or paint sprayers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or, yeah. or if you're following a large piece of equipment, you need to turn your Wagner's on for safety. <laughs> I've never heard that. <laughs> Bookie. That's who you go to make a bed, ain't it? Bookie. That's what I would think. Yeah. No, like if we was carrying a couch in, couches are real bulky. <laughs> Not bulky. <but> they're bulky. <laughs> Aubrey's. 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 I would, I would think that might be the, the, the name of a store somewhere or yeah. something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Close. That's where you get the roast beef. Aubrey's. Yeah. <laughs> Not to be confused Gotta get some with, not, Aubrey sauce. Not to be confused there. with Arby's, but it's Aubrey's. <laughs> Gotta get some Aubrey sauce while you're there. Uh, hamster. Well, that's a little pet and in, in little runs on a little wheel. Uh, well, yeah, I was going to say something else, but we got to keep it G-rated. <laughs> yeah. That's where you throw your dirty clothes. In the, ham- in the clothes <laughs> hamster. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, Golliper. Golliper? 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 Yeah. Gosh, I don't even know how to. I don't even, I don't even know. Yeah, cross between a brake caliper and a, what a horse does? I don't know. <laughs> Uncle Gene used to tell a story when he worked at Cummins, they was having a water balloon fight, and one hit a guy right in the Golliper. <laughs> <laughs> so you're pointing to your throat, I, region. I'm pointing to my golly water. <laughs> yeah, but golliper. as Uncle Gene used to say, it, was, it hit him right in the Golliper. <laughs> said, shut his wind down, he about died. <laughs> said, he saved his life, ran right over and popped it out. Can you imagine if he's still kicking the interview oh, I, him? Well, we, we, we're going to see if we can get one of his sons on here. So, Yearn. Is that where you put the dead people? That's what you put the dead people in. It's really urn. urn. It's yeah. really urn. <laughs> That's what you put the dead people in. Uh, skid Row. <laughs> oh, I mean, I know what Skid Row is like out in L.A. or something. Right. But... Well, you all know my nickname growing up as a child. Yeah. Skeet Rod. Skeet, skeet Rod, yeah. yeah. Which Uncle Gene can never remember. So he called you So he called me Skid Row for years. <laughs> <laughs> and then I've got a couple uh, down here that uh, not really uh, mispronounced. It's just uh, unique ways of saying something. So Uncle Gene would tell about uh, over in Vietnam, our boys had to fight those jelly bums. And for years, I, I had no idea what he was talking about. He was talking about napalm is what he was talking about. But he called them jelly bums because he said that stuff would get on oh, yeah. their skin and stick and uh, bum being for bomb you know yeah, but uh-huh. jelly bum jelly bum and then he also said the best vehicle they ever made was a Toyota Dakota 
<laughs> so I don't, I don't know. I don't know if he's a Dodge man or Toyota man, but <laughs> the, the, the best vehicle ever made is a Toyota so, Dakota. So on Uncle Gene, though, you've got to tell a little about his cooking, and well, I mean, there's yeah. lots of good. Yeah, I don't Uncle know. Gene we might stuff. that might have to be That's a, an episode. That, that might be on, on yeah. its own. Yeah. Uh, so I've got a word for you. If you tell me what it means to you, okay? Pilfer, pilfer. I know what pilfering is. Like you pilfer through something. Well, that's what I thought. Or I think that's what that's it is. That's not what it means. Okay. So I it, thought it would be like rummaging. That's exactly what I thought. That's how it is used in this area. Yeah. Is to rummage through something to uh-huh. kind of just meander around right. and look. Right. It means to steal. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. So Lindsay and I were up in Evansville one day and we were going to pawn shops. And we went to what we thought was a pawn shop, but it was ended up being more than a junk shop. And it's actually about five blocks from where I work now, which is the roughest part of town. And so we go to walk in, and uh, there is a lady standing in the door, in the door, and got a tooth in her head. She said, hey, how are you? And I said, I'm doing good. How are you? She said, I'm doing great. She said, what are y'all into today? I said, oh, we're just going to go in here and pilfer around. <laughs> and she looked at me like, and I mean, I could tell that I had said you something struck a that, nerve. Per, that perplexed her. Yeah. She was like, well, that's not what you need to be, you know. And she said, well, you see that fella standing right in there at the counter? And I said, yes, ma'am. She said, well, you go in there and you do that right beside him because he'll know how to handle it. And I thought, oh, well, that's odd. So we walk on through the door, and Lindsay said, I can't believe you just said that to her. Now, my wife's educated. Right. She's She's got more degrees, degrees than I can even keep up with. I mean, she's got more a More degrees than the thermostat. Yeah, she's got a wall in her office that she don't even hang them all on. Uh-huh. I mean, it wears me out. And she's smarter than me, and she reminds me a lot of it. That, that, that. <laughs> she said, I cannot believe that you just said that to her. I said, said what to her? She said, you were going to go in here and pilfer. Well, what do you think we're going to do in here? She said, I don't know, but we're not going to steal. And I said, I didn't tell her I was going to. She said, you said you're going to pilfer around? I said, yeah, but that, she said, pilfer means to steal. It does not. No, it does not. <laughs> well, yes, it does. And like, she, she threw the Google on you. Google pulls yeah. her up and proves me wrong, and yeah. it means to steal. Yeah. And I told her, I said, well, in sunfish, it means to rummage or to just meander. Mm-hmm. And she said, well, no. She said, I'm just going to be honest with you. She said, it's pretty bad that toothless lady out there no, knew not. what the hell it meant, and you didn't. <laughs> She said, she put you on your Oh, she cut me down. (laughs) She cut me down, you know. Yeah, Pilfer was another one. So, before we wrap things up, you've wanted to do a cooter tale on every episode, and then we'll eventually move into maybe interviewing him. Well, we got to tell about Cooter first. So, so Cooters are mine and your crazy cousin that we share. It is a mutual cousin. Brandon and I are really not kin unless you go back several generations. Are you going to finish with Cooter? Let me, let me tell you one more, because I've told a bunch of other people, but I was going to tell one more myself before you tell your cooter okay. story. Oh, the elevator. Yeah, I want to tell you the elevator okay. story. Okay, yeah, I've not this even is heard good, this one. This is a good one. You guys and, I, and, I've, and I've got a picture to go with, yeah. but I've not heard Yeah, it. you guys, uh, y- y'all know me as good as anybody. You grew up with me, and so you know how it is in sunfish, but you also know how it is when you take the boy out of sunfish. Oh, Sometimes yeah. we're like a fish out of water. Yeah. Just like what you were telling there. Yeah. You know, if you'd said pilfer around here, we didn't know what you meant. Yeah. But you say that somewhere else, and it's uh-huh. a totally different meaning. So my wife loves to go to the beach, and I am not a beach. I mean, I am clear. I don't have Bub's golden skin over there. You know, <laughs> I can sunburn at a hundred watt light bulb. You're as white as the inside of a biscuit. I am. I am yeah. dough white. I mean, I. I it's not just the last night. You name. can't tell yeah. where my socks in. Uh, but she loves the beach. So if we go on vacation, guess where we go? Yeah. We go to the beach. So we went to St. Augustine, Florida one year. Uh, we went to Legoland. The kids were old enough. They really wanted to do that. We went over to St. Augustine. Uh, she had fixed us up in a condo, which was you know a lot better than just a motel or hotel, something oh, like yeah, that. Uh, when we get there, though, it is a typical Florida mid-morning downpour. Yeah, right. I mean, oh, drops as big as dimes, mm-hmm. raining. And we've got everything we own in the back of a GMC terrain, you know, to go down there. Mm-hmm. 
and the kids are asleep. Long trip where we drove over. The kids are asleep. She give, We have stopped by the manager's desk first and get the key card for the room. We pull up there. And I said, I tell you what, just you get the kids to be waking up, get their shoes on, get some coats on, that sort of thing. I'm going to take a load of stuff up to the room, get that done, because it's going to take several trips yeah. to do this. Uh, do you have that picture that I sent you? I or? do. I'll put it on the Facebook Well, I was going to let you show Jeremy so you guys get a kind of an idea of what I'm talking about. So I've got... You know how it is with luggage. You got one over each shoulder. You're having the struggle that every dad. Has. Every every dad has had. So I just want you to get a visual of this. <laughs> okay. So I, I've I've got this key card in my hand. It's an outside elevator. It's three stories, and we're on the third story. Right. I get. I mean, just rain running. Shoes are wet. Socks are wet. Get up under there, and and you can see by the picture that Bub's going to post, and that he just showed you. There's a big red button there. Uh, for the elevator and I push the button I push the button and it don't work I push the button push the button it don't work and I think well maybe this is one of them <laughs> fancy places uh, so I get the key card out and I'm running over the the yeah. red part there trying to get it to scan no noises no nothing just my luck the elevator's out and I so three flights of steps all the way up <laughs> key card in the door Put the stuff in, shut the door, three flights of steps all the way back down, load up another load of stuff, make it up to the second floor, and another gentleman is coming up to the elevator at the same time that I am, that you can tell is a tourist, and he is wider than I am, got the stereotypical sun tan lotion on the nose, six foot four, just a huge guy, and when he talks, he's kind of got a Minnesota accent, and I can't do accents very well but i'll do my best just yeah. to give the story a, a little bit of life here and we meet at the elevator about the same time and i said man i tell you what uh, that elevator's broke i done been packing stuff up these steps and he said oh he said i come down it i come up in it a while ago i was going to go back down in it and i said well i hope you have better luck than i did because i couldn't and i reach over there and i hit the red button and I said, see, it's not working. And he said, oh, no. He said, you hit the button. So uh, I don't know if you got that picture, but I want you to be looking at this picture when I'm telling you this. <laughs> and, and I said, I said, so I see this red button. I see a rivet that's holding the, the screen on, and then I see a key that unlocks for the fire. Yeah. And I said, no. I said, it's not working. I said, does your key card do this? He said, no, no, no. I said, you just hit the button. And so I'm thinking, this guy's a moron. <laughs> And, and so I, in front of him, so he don't think I'm stupid, I'm pressing the red button where he can see me, but I'm looking at him. And he said, I said, see, it don't work. And he said, lower. <laughs> and so I take my finger and I move it from the top to the bottom of the red button. And he goes, he goes, lower. <laughs> and I move my finger on top of this rivet. And he says, yeah, <laughs> and I push it, and that's the button. <laughs> so, so you was thinking he's a moron, but he really thought you was a moron. So, so the door opens up, and he's going down. I said, "Just go ahead." I was going to take him. <laughs> I just packed him the rest of the way up. But yeah, I'm holding my finger over this button. He's going to lower. He said, "Lower, <laughs> lower." <laughs> he, was, he was walking. He, he was walking me through it, and I guarantee you, somewhere. In the United States of America, this man is telling about this guy that he met from somewhere this in the country, South. This, this country, country idiot. He, he, yeah. is, he is on a podcast. He's somewhere. on a podcast yeah. somewhere, maybe. So if you hear this, and this is you. Uh, please try to find us. So, oh, that's funny. So I wanted to tell that one on yeah, me. Yeah, that's for good sure. one there. For I, sure. I, I didn't know if you guys had ever heard that one or no, not. But, no, that's I funny. mean, when you get me, I, I, I feel pretty comfortable in sunfish, but when you get me out of sight of sunfish, my my senses start going down. I, I get tunnel vision. I'm just like, I want to get home as quick as I can. <laughs> you know, we travel a lot, and I love it. And I've got to where I just don't care. We go somewhere, and I'm like, I'm just going to be myself. Right. Lindsay has pretty much adjusted to it, so, you know, it doesn't it doesn't take her a lot. We, uh... We were at a restaurant on a vacation, and the old boy, uh, we were ordering fish. I hate fish, but where we were at, fish and chips were the big thing. Mm -hmm. And she was wanting fish, and I hate fish. I suffer through it about once a year. And she's like, I want fish. Well, let's go get some fish. So we go in this world-famous fish restaurant, and it's it's kind of like almost gas station uh, style. It's mm -hmm. in a case behind it. They're dumping that fish straight out of the oil right in there. And 
I point to the fish, which looks like Captain D's fish. Mm-hmm. And I said, I want some of that right there. He said, okay, how many of them do you want? I said, I want, I'd like to have three of them. You know, you sop enough tartar sauce on it, it'll kill that mm-hmm. fish taste. He said, you want three? And I said, yeah, I'd like to have three. And I, I could just see him saying, you fat American. <laughs> like y'all place. were across the big pond. Yeah, we were across the pond. And uh, so he's like, oh, okay. You know, and we, in, in other countries that don't use the American dollar, it is hard for me to to to, ju- to sit and think that's high or that's expensive. <laughs> he rings me up. I don't even remember if he told me how much it was. I gave him the credit card, took the credit card, and he said, your fish will be out in a minute. So we're sitting there, and they finally call our number, and I'm telling them they had three trays worth of fish. <laughs> and I'm like, what the heck? I wanted three pieces. That's not, that's not me, man. That, that, that's not my, yeah, sure, you're number 27. <laughs> no, no. And I, I had pointed, and he had thought I was pointing – Beside him, and Kyle, it was slabs of fish. I don't know, it was like shark or something. I don't know. <laughs> Killer whale. Two it foot slab of fish. Huge, huge slabs of fish. And they had that stuff cut up in boxes with fries and hush puppies. And they said, I'm going to need a to go box for this one. Guys. Well, it was all to go. You, yeah. you went outside oh, and sat on the street. I went out there. I took two bites. I couldn't do it. Lindsay's like, You're not going to throw all that fish away. You hide and watch. I can't. You know, I, you know, I'm fat, dude. I love food. I'm fixing to waste some of it here. So yeah, she. I just. I mean, you just growing up here. I mean, it, it's it's a way of life, it and is. Uh, you go out and you can try to act like you're somebody you're not, or you can just just roll be who with you it. are. Hell, That's I right. just roll with yeah. it. So, but are you ready for a coder story? We're we're gonna do a coder tale and wrap it up because I'd say we're knocking on an hour or a little over. I don't know. I started that a little late, but. Uh, so Cooter is mine and your mutual cousin. Cousin, good friend of Kyle's, grew up here with us. And just, to, just I mean, I love Cooter. I grew up with him. We're five months apart. I mean, he is he is the the person I grew up with. He mm-hmm. was like a brother. But just to be fair, I share no DNA with him. <laughs> like Brandon, you're just does. getting this out I there. Do. Yeah, I do. I share <laughs> DNA plus. We're double step cousins too. On top of that, so we we'll, we'll, we may have to get into that later on. Yeah, I, I, that, that you just might went, have to draw a picture for. Yeah, that. I'd have to draw a yeah, picture. That'll confuse people on that one. But so Cooter's mother and my dad were step siblings. Yeah, and yeah. like I said, they were step siblings before I was born. He, I think, I'd be more like a brother than mm-hmm. I do. A but we've got lots and lots of really good Cooter stories. He's a mess. I mean, that's, he, he, he's crazy. Cooter fits him. He is comical. Uh, he's funny, and he doesn't care but you you've got lots you've probably got more than any of the rest of us i've got a few i know kyle's got a few but since kyle's kind of the guest on this episode even though we're going to try to talk you into being a regular yeah uh he's going to tell the coder story on this one then we're going to get so many episodes in we're going to have coder on the podcast Yeah, you got right. a beat button there because, I mean, when you get Cooter on here, you have to have a, be- a button. A beat button. No, I have to go back and edit it. <laughs> okay, Kyle, you get to tell Cooter this Cooter is, story. He's a living legend. That's, he that's, that's he's, for sure. He's known worldwide. He, well, I mean, when yeah. this gets out there, the, the, he's known worldwide. Absolutely. You know, and I think, uh, you know, I told you the other day, I think every generation has that person. My Our parents' generation is hit the guy, they call him Wheatley. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I told you earlier, Cooter is, is the, the weekly the, of our generation. I agree. Yeah. I agree. There will be stories, I'm sure, that you guys tell that people will listen to and think, no, this is like a Jerry Clower where you make it up and you just fit it to but, people but in your you community. But you can verify their truth. But there'll be tr- they will be true stories. Mm-hmm, They'll yeah. be true stories. So I, I was watching uh, uh, Larry the Cable Guy, and I think I sent it to you. Uh, there was a little excerpt about Larry the Cable Guy telling about uh, a buddy of his that, Got engaged at Ponderosa. Oh. Do you remember me sending that to you? <laughs> yeah, I was wondering which one you were going to tell. Yeah. I forgot. Yeah, yeah. and and uh, and I, t- I sent that to Donkey, and I'm like, Cooter should get royalties off this. I, I, I bet you, Larry the Cable Guy doesn't really have a friend that done this. Yeah, and we do. So I'm I'm going to tell this one on Cooter. Uh, it's uh, uh, it's maybe not the best one I've got, but I think it's the mo- maybe the, the one that I can tell for, for for this podcast anyway. And we'll we'll leave some of the names off to protect the innocent. But anyway, so uh, my my junior year, uh, I quit riding the bus and start riding to school with Cooter. He's got that little gray S10 that Big Charlie gave him, and it didn't last very long. <laughs> Cooter's been through several vehicles. Yeah. A uh, short time after that, he got that old 70 Chevrolet that you were talking about. Yeah. 
And uh, the reason it went down, he had the great idea, was using so much oil to put 80, 90 in it. In the motor. <laughs> in the motor. In the motor, yeah. Yeah. Uh, which, needless well, to say, better, right? better. It, well, yeah. it didn't leak. It didn't use it. I'll, I'll give him that one. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, so he exhausts all of his options, and so by this time I've got my license, and so now I'm the chauffeur. Mm -hmm. He's driving. You're, I'm, you're I'm the driving. driver. I'm the driver. So yeah, we, I drive us to school. Uh, a lot of times it's me and him, uh, and girl, Michael, Joe, and the girl he's dating, and the girl the he's dating at the time, uh, and, and we're you know going back and forth to school if we you know if we need to run to Litchfield for something or, or go to Walmart or so hold on at this point is she pregnant she is pregnant at yep. this point mm -hmm. she's, she's pregnant, pregnant. Yep. okay uh -huh. and so he calls me one night one night and says hey what are you doing and I said uh, not much what are you into he which, said which was standard for good right, right. Yeah. Like, what are you doing? yeah yeah right, right. yeah yeah you want to go to Litchfield get something to eat I said sure so come pick me up so I, I go down I pick him up we're coming down the road he said let's stop and pick my girlfriend up I'm like really you know i thought we just made yeah let's stop and pick her okay so pick her up we're going to the at this point you're the, just the third man driving I, I'm, yeah i'm clueless in this i'm just driving and what was so funny uh cooter when when we would ride uh he was he would always sit in the middle she sat <laughs> by the window and so if you would see us coming down the road it was me driving cooter i in the remember middle. that yeah. i forgot about that <laughs> he always sat in the middle he scared which I, <laughs> Maybe a little close, jail, yeah. I don't know, but anyway, <laughs> so we're going to Litchfield, me driving, Cooter in the middle, she's in the passenger seat, and so we're going up through there, and, and Litchfield, that's uh, probably the closest, biggest city to us, Bowling Green, Kentucky, is is a little farther away, it's it's uh, the third biggest city in our state. Litchfield's where you went to you go to the Walmart. Walmart, and, and they or, had Mc... Or wanted a little selection on restaurants. Yeah, they had McDonald's, Hardee's, mm -hmm. things like a fast food you would always yeah. stop up there and get, they had a Mexican restaurant and whatnot. Yeah. But we're, we're going up through there, down the strip, as I would call it. And uh, I'm like, well, you know, where you guys want to eat? You want McDonald's or Hardee's or this or whatever? He said, let's go to Ponderosa. No, it was Golden Crow, wasn't it? I think it was Ponderosa. That was Golden Crow. Golden, Golden Crow. Let's yeah. go to Golden Crow. Yeah, yeah, let's go to Golden Crow. Yeah. Let's Golden go to Golden Crow. Let's go to Golden Crow. That's what it was. Ponderosa was Larry the Cable Guy's yeah, story. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go to Golden Crow. Which, to a couple of teenage guys, you, you just didn't go to Golden Crow. Right. You know, that's where your mom and dad took yeah. you if it was your yeah. birthday or yeah. something like that. It's a big you know, deal to get to go. That's a big deal. Yeah. yeah, that's a big deal. And I'm yeah. like, Golden Crow? You want to go to Golden Crow? He's like, yeah. Are you sure? Don't you want to get... He's like, yes, I'm sure. Okay. Very stern. Very, very stern. stern. Yeah, very stern. So we pull in the uh, parking lot there, and we go in, and there's a hostess there that would seat you. I don't know if you guys remember that or not. Big salad bar. And so uh, she goes up to the salad bar, and uh, we're sitting across each other from the booth. He reaches in his pocket, brings out a little box, flips it open, says, what do you think about that? I said, uh, what is that? He said, I'm going to ask her to marry me tonight. I said, no, you're not. <laughs> not with me here, you're not. He said, yes, I am too. Why do you think we come to Gold Crow? I said, I have no idea. But if this is your plan, it's a bad plan. We, we are not going to do this tonight. He's like, yeah, yeah, I am too. And, and I said, no, please don't. I, I mean, I've resorted to begging now. I'm like, please don't do this. Well, by this time, she's got her salad. She's back in the booth. So he puts it up. And so I go and get me a salad. I'm thinking, well, if this is going to happen, at least it can happen when I'm not around. Oh, no. No, he's no. going to wait till you're no. there. No, we got to have, you know, Cooter likes an audience. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, yeah. He, 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 he likes an audience. So uh, I get set back down, and, and uh, the conversation is very tense, uh, to say the least. <laughs> and finally, he, he breaks it open and shows it to her and says, uh, well, what do you think? <laughs> and she's like, was well, that what I think it is? And, and they're talking code words, and I'm sitting over there with a thousand dollars. You got my the salad fly, huh? yeah, I'm just, I mean, I'm, I got my head down. I don't even really like salad that much. I'm just trying to give them time. And, uh, and so she finally, he finally says, "Yeah, I think, yeah, let's get married." And she's like, "Okay." And <laughs> that's a golden crowd. That's a golden crowd. That's and, and then I'm like, "All right, so uh, I'll take the pork chops or something <laughs> like that, you know." <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then we come home. <laughs> yeah, that's hilarious. You know, you sent that to me. I forgot you sent that to me. And I ran into her at church. Well, you hadn't ever heard it at that time, yeah, which has surprised had, I, me well, that I hadn't I ever had, even talked. I had either forgot it or just hadn't heard that story. Well, I was at church one Sunday down here, and after mass, she was she sat with uh, uh, Alicia up here. There's a couple rows in front of. Her. She come out, and I said, "Hey." 
I was having a big laugh about you the other day. She said, what about? I told her. She said, I will kill you right here in this church if you ever mention that to anybody again. <laughs> <laughs> well, we protected the name. Yeah, so. we protected it, so don't matter. <laughs> Maybe so protected you a little that's bit. My, that's my cooter story. Okay. I have I yeah. have more, but... Uh, <gasps> Well, yeah. we're gonna we're gonna have to close this one out. We've run longer than we was aimed to, but uh, thanks for having me, guys. Uh, you're you you're, coming you. you're coming oh, by. You're coming by. You're gonna be a regular. We're gonna have you in here with some guests. You you've got to come if we can get Cole in on here. You may have to talk him into it. Uh, but uh, if you've made it this far, thanks for listening. Thanks for putting up with us. And we've just scratched the surface with Kyle on some stories. I had a lot more stuff jotted down here. But we'll have to get it on another episode. And I know Jeremy's got lots, and I've got some stories. So uh, we appreciate y'all listening. 42284. 42284 out. <laughs>